Hello guys and welcome to another David Zimbalata. In today's video, let's talk about the Jeep throttle body. Um, recently I bought a Jeep Patriot from the auction. It's a 2015 Jeep Patriot. And you know what guys? When I tried to basically start it, it started up and then shut off and it started up and shut off. But I noticed red lightning just keep flashing, 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 flashing. And I really wasn't familiar with that. And I asked my viewers to say, you know, Guys, if you know what it is, blah, 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 put it in the comments below. Some of you guys have responded and said, Jeep throttle body, Jeep throttle body, Jeep throttle body. But this is actually after I already found out myself. Because before, obviously, making that video, I went and I actually researched this topic. And I've seen a lot of people basically pointing up to Jeep throttle body. I watched some videos. Turns out, hey, not so bad. It's a Jeep throttle body. Uh, a lot of these Jeeps were affected. And I think uh, 2007 through 2015 were affected models. Maybe some of the other newer ones were not affected. You know, who knows? Um, but anyways, my Jeep was actually hit in the front end, which did dented the throttle body. And when it did that, there's gears that like to rotate in there and they just can't. So it basically damaged it. But guess what, guys? In this video... I'm going to remove the throttle body. I will show you how to replace it. And you're going to see me actually drive that Jeep uh, in today's video. So all that, guys, coming up. Enjoy the video. In today's video, I'm going to show you the throttle position sensor and throttle body on a 2015 Jeep Patriot. They've been making this thing since uh, 2007 through 2017. Um, this is it right here. There is absolutely nothing to it. Uh, the dealership will charge you around 1200 bucks to get it replaced. But you can do this yourself by simply removing this hose right here and just four bolts and replacing it. So. That's actually what we're gonna do in this video. Um, I don't have a replacement piece. Uh, this car was in an accident and because it's damaged right here, um, when you actually start the vehicle up, the red thunderbolt just flashes on the screen and there's absolutely no throttle response from the gas pedal. So now I could see why, because I'm kind of thinking, well, this Jeep was running up until then, why is it not running at all like it engages into drive and it engages into um, reverse and barely crawls along the parking lot and i scan the codes and it's saying that throttle position sensor stuck unclosed so this is what's going on so we're going to need some flathead screwdriver i got one right here and we're going to disconnect this uh sensor here We're just gonna disconnect this pipe. Um, I've seen many videos on people trying to replace it, and some of them say you have to replace the, you have to remove the radiator hose. You really don't. Uh, you could technically just unplug it from one side and just tuck it out of your way, you know, because you can technically reach down in here and do this. Uh, just for me, this Jeep wasn't an accident, and when I record videos, I'd like to pull everything off that way you guys could see exactly what's going on down in here because I've seen a lot of videos and you can't really exactly see what somebody's doing down in this little hole because usually the video is being made at, at night and it's really hard to get a camera down in here so let's just be honest here so it's going to be pretty difficult so we have that sensor we have to remove one should be coming out already but apparently it's not I 
So this one was a little bit damaged, I guess, from the accident. Was not actually engaging. So you could just simply pull this pipe. And exactly as we can see now, that thing is shut. You know, just take a look at that. Now there is bolts on the other side and I'm kind of wondering what's going to happen if you just remove that throttle position sensor. Uh, and then also, I'm kind of curious to know what's behind here. Can we take a can opener and just open it right up? But anyways, um, all jokes aside, I want to go ahead and uh, pull it out. Uh, Kevin, where's the 10 millimeter that Jason was using? Do you know? Uh, oh, it's right here. Yes, over there. I was like about to throw it. Uh -huh. So first I'm going to remove it as you normally would be replacing it. And then I'm wondering, can you simply just remove that throttle body portion and just leave it out of there? Would you even make the you know Jeep drivable? at all what would it do i'm always curious about these things you know because 2012 through 2017 jeep patriot was affected with this problem and technically there should be some kind of recall because these throttle bodies they're just going on you know going out on all these jeeps some of the earliest was not affected so i'm kind of wondering what happened there why is such a decline in quality So, it's fairly easy to replace, but if they want to charge $1,200 to do it, the dealership, I could kind of see why that quality has degraded over time. Because they just want to get you in the door, replace this four bolt part, which is actually really simple to replace. Um, and one of the things I wonder is, will this vehicle run without it? I guess yeah that's the question of the day do you re do you even need it in here can you maybe just leave this whole thing um, and just plug in the electronics making a computer happy sort of but just remove the actual throttle because the way it seems to me like it is stuck and I'm not sure if it's like mechanically stuck or what like what's actually going on here um, so here we go just pulled it off I mean just look at it it seems like it needs to almost like open this way but there's a couple bolts to try to just like unbolt it and just get rid of it um, I could imagine a portion that fails is right in here and this is supposed to be opening it up and it just doesn't. Now there is a little bolt hold here. It's a special one. I'm wondering, you know, what is that really holding? But this particular piece, it's just crumpled on here like a can. That's how it's closed. So that's why I was saying, you know, taking a can opener. But obviously when it was hit over here, it damaged the components to where now this piece just simply won't won't rotate I mean it's just super stuck so let me see if anything can happen like if I could just like I'm, I'm damaging this uh, aluminum here so that's not happening and then that's not happening so the type of bolt that they use in this it is not a standard like I probably have it but this is not something you you would find in a normal toolbox so I'm gonna have to do some searching in this little box got it a while back to work in German cars and this had a lot of interesting stuff you know this is obviously too big but it's got a lot of interesting you know sockets in here so yeah guys uh i found one seems like it just 
it did work. Not really. That one worked. Worked somewhat. Not as good as I hope. So, <laughs> that's not gonna help anything. So I'm gonna have to like take a Dremel, cut the, like a little groove and just use a flathead to remove it. Now, before I get back to you on that other piece, um, everybody wonders if the seal needs to be replaced or not because some of the kits that come in, um, they don't have a seal. It says they do, but they don't. Um, but this seal is supposed to work forever, you know, from factory. Um, you're not really supposed to replace it, you could just leave it. And I don't see why would you would, this is just like pretty much air going through here. Um, it seemed like it would seal off, you know, like nicely good in here. So just don't worry about it, just leave that seal in place and install yourself another one. Now I want to actually bang this metal piece out. I think it should uh, come right out. And I'm not sure which way it's actually going to come out. Looks like I'm able to actually open it. There you go. Huh. Man, I got this thing unstuck. So this is all I kind of want to do. Um, and I just want to be able to reinstall this back on there. And see if this thing is going to be even drivable anymore. By the way, in case you're wondering which way to put on stuff, there's a couple dowel pins. So basically aim it inside of that one and inside of the other one. So there's really no way to put this thing on wrong. So I said I'm going to make a video showing replacing. So I'm replacing with the, the same one. Um, and this will give you a very good idea how to actually do it correctly. I actually, um, I messed up a little bit. I forgot to put that other metal piece back. This one, you see? Now everything's in place, as it should be. I wanna see if this thing drives now. I mean, I don't see why it should, it should not. Um, because technically, it's gotta get air. So, you might be wondering, why not just buy the other piece and install it? Well, I will be. That's what I'm gonna be doing. But it's on its way. I don't have it right now. So I kind of figured, you know what? I'm going to play with it. And what if I could just do this and save somebody some trouble to where at least cause this vehicle, you know, to drive again. Because imagine, you know, this, this uh, throttle body goes out on you and you know, you need to get home. So maybe you could just reach down in there, disconnect the pipe you know or drill a few holes in there or just disconnect these four bolts and uh just eliminate it all together and just drive home you know shoot it it beats uh having a tow um i just paid 150 dollars to get this thing towed over here to me you know but if i if i could have just like removed this and drove it home you know hey would have been a lot better but in my case i mean this vehicle you know it's an auction vehicle anyway so I couldn't really drive it like that anyways. The radiator is busted and uh, it's kind of overheating the way down here. So definitely not a way to do it, but it was sold to me as a run and drive. So it wasn't driving. 
when I actually got it. So I'm surprised how the auctions do it these days. They're selling the vehicle to you as a run and drive, and really, it's not. It's not a run and drive. So I'm kind of doing this in real time installation. So you could get a, a good idea how long it takes to actually do it. So now we're gonna take that piece of pipe and we're gonna reinstall it. And here's the thing that goes to it. Yep. So one goes to the top. And one goes at the bottom. In the middle. Or oh yeah, in the middle. So we need to get this thing over here. Like this. So we're gonna attach attach the electrical. Hey Kevin, let's move these uh buckets. I'm gonna try to install the battery in here and see if uh, we could get this to run so let's just remove the buckets um, and we're gonna need that battery we might be able to actually drive it Kevin Yep. Okay, let's see if we could start it. See what happens. So let me see what's happening. So obviously with the throttle body open all the way, this is what it's gonna do. But the question is, will it rev? See what the RPMs is doing. At least it revs. So let's shut this thing off. Looks like that throttle position is very important piece in the equation. So what I wanna do now is um, I want to go ahead and lower this one. Uh, I want to open it up and twist it to where it's like halfway open and see what's that going to do. First thing I want to do, what happens if you unplug it? So I'm going to do that first. RPMs are doing good but anyways we don't have no radiator fluid anyways so we don't want to run it too long even though this is like nothing to have it run but um yeah I'm gonna go ahead and actually see if I could close it somewhat and I actually want to see it maybe uh maybe it actually closed it by itself It didn't. Um, you can kind of see it right there. So I'm gonna open up like just a little bit, see what's gonna happen. Wow, almost lost the thing inside of the fender. So I'm gonna try to adjust it manually. So if I close it, this is what happens. So a little bit open. Something's wrong with the exhaust. 
So I'm gonna close it. See what happens. It basically has no air. See if I'm, my uh, accelerator would be the same. So it's a little bit more stable now. Let me see if I could drive it. Gavin, excuse me. Oh wait. It's drivable. I really don't know how to keep it from not falling, but I just want to see, see if I could drive it. This vehicle was not driving at all. So now it's driving. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is see if it drives uphill now. So I could finally drive it uphill. Wasn't doing that before. So now <laughs> I would say actually drives, drives great <laughs> according to what it was. So we still have some good temperature. I actually spinning tires. Probably lost the radiator. Let's take a look. It's still on. I just don't want to lose it. But hey, it's driving. I'm happy with what it's doing. I just need to now turn it around. Can you believe it? That one little thing was doing all that trouble. And even though now I closed it, I'm still able to technically drive it. It's gonna start overheating soon. Good. Fixed it. My name is Serge Zamaleta. I'm 37 years old. And yes, I experienced success after buying my first home for cash. Back in 2011, I was broke. But I learned to solve problems on my own. Now, I'm helping others to solve their problems. I know what pitfalls to avoid to stay profitable in business. Need motivation to be more successful in your life? Do you have Sprinter Expedite or business problems? Then subscribe. Let's find creative solutions to your problems. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my helpful videos.